Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Biz Design podcast on enterprise architecture. I am your host, Will Hardison, one of the marketing managers here at Biz Design. I have Aaron Tan with me today. Uh, Aaron is the group CEO of ATD Solutions in Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, and Hong Kong. He's also the chairman and founder of the IASA Asia Pacific, which is the IT architecture professional body. And he's also written a book. He's a co-author of the IASA Beta Book, which is Business Technology Architect Body of Knowledge Skill Sets. I'm really excited to have him on today. How are you, Aaron? Thank you so much. And thanks, Will, for uh, hosting me. And hello, everyone. My name is Aaron. So Aaron and I have uh, been chatting about this topic uh, for you know a few weeks now, and I'm really excited for him to kind of break down sort of the different eras of enterprise architecture. And you know, we all know, like any industry, things change, right? Trends come and go, demands change, external factors change, and much more. But I don't think we've seen an era of change like we have over the last three to four years within enterprise architecture. Um, I think we can all agree that COVID, you know, like it did with many industries, had a massive change impact on enterprise architecture industry. So Aaron, I'm curious, um, and I know we're gonna go back a little bit further. We had, you know, kind of previously discussed the past three to four years, but I think you're gonna take us even further back um, than that, you know, and. It kind of explained where we started uh, probably 10 or so years ago as enterprise architecture. All right. Thank you, Will. I think uh, for those of you who are uh, architect practitioners that has been uh, in the so-called in the practice for the last 20 years, right? You could recall somewhere in the year 2000. So if you see, uh, you know, like a stock market, stock market typically go to graph where they go accelerate and then the bubble burst go down, right? So and the first architecture went through the same era. So uh, actually the graph was uh, uh, defined by Gartner. So year 2000 was the peak for the enterprise architecture adoption globally, right? Because remember in the 1997, 98 is uh, where the, or the dot-com era uh, picking up all over the world. So enterprise architecture also followed that wave. So year 2000 was the peak and after that free fall, okay? There was the free fall until the rock bottom at the 2012. That is where the there was where the TOGAF uh, nine was introduced. Then start accelerating. Then of course, if those of you who follow the concept on the what I call it traditional EA, right? So the traditional EA actually uh back uh, prior to two zero one three, and and of course the traditional EA means uh the all the diagram the model are static, right? I think we understand now the concept of static. I don't think we can accept the static uh, architect today, architecture uh, artifacts, because what happened is that in the static model, typically we cannot interact, right? We can only uh, see the diagram, but, but we cannot even touch, right? We can print it out, but of course, as soon as you print it out, immediately obsolete. And of course, the most of the artifacts are either in Microsoft PowerPoint, Excel, or spreadsheet. Of course, the joke is that if we are not doing architecture, but we are become the uh, PowerPoint or, or official architects. Right, yeah. because our job, our life, deal a lot with the Excel spreadsheet. I mean, it was okay in the past, but I think now the world has moved, uh, the technology also has moved on, and we need to adapt, right? And of course, if if you can recall that, if you uh, the practitioners in the early days, right, prior to two zero one three, the architecture typically taking place inside the project. Okay, so what do I mean by that? So when you look inside the project, the project manager or the project management already has the whole resources timeline budget has been decided. So what can we do with the architecture? Pretty much nothing, right? But it's just that, oh, they need to have an architect assigned to the project, right? So my analogy is that I was in that situation before. So it's like, I want to play uh, a so-called marathon, but someone, need, but my, my leg were handcuffed, right? What do I mean? I cannot run, I can only jump, right? So basically it's like, I can't do much. Everything is limited. So there was the era prior to 2013, what we call it traditional EA or EA 1.0. In addition, back uh, in the EA uh, enterprise architecture 1.0 or traditional prior to, 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 to 2013, and pretty much also technology focus, right? So lack of the business uh, value or, or business validation. So pretty much like a typical IT project, right? We are trying to fulfill the business requirement. We focus a lot on technology. So there was uh, the first era on the 
what I call it traditional EA prior to 2013. Of course, 2013 onwards, I think you've heard the concept on the digital EA, right? Because the platform of like a uh, mainstream platform like Beach Design also evolved a lot, right? And of course, with the push of the Toga 9 that are focusing a lot on the business architecture that make business architecture is uh, a prerequisite before any other architecture domain uh, Mm, can be established like data architecture, application architecture, technology architecture, and solution architecture. So business architecture need to be done first, right? And of course, uh, the EA also evolved, right? So it's following the uh, construction world, construction of physical building world, that architecture is done before the project management. So basically, they have the uh, understanding, the interrelationship, the dependency, the impact that particular project bring to the entire organization. Right. And of course, we can see as well that the uh, emerging uh, trend on the business technology integration. Right. So there was basically a digital EA 2.0 until the COVID time. Right. COVID time. Why do I say that? Because I think uh, in the early days of COVID, many organizations, those who have adopted EA, they can transition or cushion the impact of COVID uh, smoothly. Whereby those who don't have are still accelerating the digital transformation. Now, of course, now we are in the 2023. We, have, we already passed the pandemic era. Now's the time to do spring cleaning, right? I will call spring cleaning. Of sure. course, uh, Gartner said this, relook at the entire business architecture. We need to clean up what we have done in the last three years with the speed of, uh, you know, uh, fast acceleration of uh, digital uh, adoption. And I think architecture will play a more critical role today than prior to the COVID era. Okay, over to you, Will. Now, what I mean, does it surprise you at all when you hear uh, that some people are still using tools like Microsoft Visio, PowerPoint and Excel? Um, I mean, I know that that was kind of 2013, but I mean, does do you get surprised by that? Oh, uh, actually, there are many of them, right? In fact, uh, uh, you know, I deal with a lot of the enterprises and as a matter of fact, that was the so-called uh, by default tool of EA, right? Sure. They use some uh, 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 share, share, share uh, a drive collaboration like SharePoint or etc. But again, you can achieve some sort of architecture, but I would think it's very, very uh, 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 minimum, right? You can't deliver value. Of course, if you continue doing that, then of course the management will see that what's the value of keeping this uh, enterprise architect department or team, right? I mean, sure. Of course, I have one uh, a, a real scenario, right, of uh, one of the uh, client. They, in fact, uh, managing all the relationship, all the meta model relationship of the enterprise using uh, Excel. Okay, and they need to have a gaming laptop to maintain or preserve the complex relationship. Well, but actually, you know, the platform like this design is just a click away, right? Why, why, why would you have a team, right, and introduce an overhead and maintaining everything manually using Excel spreadsheet, right? They can preserve that, of course. I mean, like we can also now do all the warehouse uh, management uh, system using Excel, but nobody else, nobody is doing that today, right? Yeah. Thirty years ago, many. So Excel is the, basically is the uh, good starting, but I think now uh, everyone need to uh, revisit and relook on what the your job scope and deliver more value than just doing sure. many overhead uh, tasks or mundane tasks. Yep. So you've got the traditional EA and then we move into digital EA and, and that kind of brings us, you know, into the, the height of COVID. Um, so now digital EA is here, but still somewhat behind us. Right. So we're in 2023 yeah. and hopefully we've survived the challenging uh, changes that came out of the height of COVID. So looking at this year um, and even a little bit more forward, what do you see as the current state of enterprise architecture? OK, well, in the last in fact, in the last 10 years, I always faced a challenge when uh, dealing with the agile team, right? They told me that, Warren, well, we are the agile team. You asked me to introduce EA. No, nope, no. Nope, right. Basically, it's like hindering my agile uh, sprint uh, progression. Right. So I said, no, uh, architecture remains static, but the agile is about the so-called style of how you deliver and build a, a, a system. Right. Of course, I can't really define it hard, but until a TOGAF uh, enterprise architecture standard 10 edition came up end of last year, 
So they introduced the concept of the Agile EA, Digital EA, right? So it is a very good uh, so-called uh, uh, aligned with what uh, industry is now doing. Everyone want to be a so-called uh, fast, right? If they ask, if you ask them, when do you need this? They tell you always last week, last month. They never say, I can wait two more months. No, yesterday, right? So EA also evolved towards that direction. Right, the architecture is remain uh, uh, so called uh, stable, but the rapid change and the filling up the gaps, it will go into the agile uh, so called trend. Right, in the agile, they got the so called the product owner. So in the agile EA, we have what we call it architect owner. Right, so the architect owner will uh, manage a smaller chunk of the architecture uh, 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 job to be done. Right, and then. Uh, synchronize that with the sprint, right? With the sprint on the agile uh, team so that they can deliver results. Because imagine in the today complex on the digital world, you don't have architecture, you just leave it straight into the agile development. Of course, I believe the code will be there, the system will be up, but the maintenance, you have to pay 10 times the price, right? And you cannot afford to do that in this today context. We build something and then, you know, to stabilize, take maybe uh, three times longer and also the cost going to escalate, right? Because uh, information today is uh, key and need to be preserved somewhere. This is where the Agile EA is preserving the information so that the Agile software development team can continue releasing a new uh, product update, new features, new functionality, new capability. And I think in addition, what I can see is that we have to accept today there isn't anything constant. The only constant is change, right? And then the change today, of course, you heard the concept of the FUCA, right? Uh, actually borrowed concept from the US military, right? FUCA basically is volatility. So volatility is constant, right? So we cannot think like, oh, uh, I think uh, we cannot adopt enterprise architecture because our business is very volatile. In fact, the more volatile you are, the more you need to adopt the architecture, right? So that you can react fast, you can change fast. And of course, the second uh, alphabet on the FUCA is U, uncertainty, right? So everything is full of, of uncertainty. And again, talking about this reminded me on the like, 10 years ago, people told me that Aaron, my business is moving very, very fast. We have no time for EA. I said, no, <laughs> you can't do that anymore. No, it's that EA is uh, now is adopted to cushion the impact of the volatility, of uncertainty, and of course, the third alphabet called complexity, right? We cannot eliminate complexity, but we can manage the complexity, right? How do we manage that? So enterprise architecture play a key role, right? With the framework, with the standard, with the governor, we can manage the complexity so that the complexity is become part of the, our routine uh, activity, right? And the last part is ambiguity. So ambiguity also is very interesting because what happened is that uh, sometimes it's very difficult to convey the message. I want to tell something about my architecture, but just my mouth, my lingo cannot describe that, right? I need to come yeah. up like 10 diagram and after that people confuse and they said, again, never mind, Aaron, you do it, right? I just trust you. So like today in the context of the Agile EA, we have the notation like Akimit, right? So Akimit eliminating ambiguity. So everyone go into the same page, so they have the same understanding and, you know, they can they can comprehend and they can, they can realize it together, okay? So I think this, uh, uh, the concept on the Agile EA, then if I want to add one more thing, I think now, the whole world industry is moving towards uh, SDG, right? Uh, a social um, a development goal. And of course, they got the KPI, right? You can call it ESG, right? So ESG about en environment, um, uh, uh, social, and the governance, right? So this is something uh, now uh, what enterprise architects also need to focus at because every industry now is trying to uh, contribute to preserve the entire world, the entire environment, right? So uh, uh, enterprise architecture play a critical role and how we can help our organization to meet and realize the ESG goal, right? Because ESG goal, I think, is the global trend up to 2030. So I can see the Agile EA will evolve uh, rapidly towards uh, 2030 where the ESG and SDG goal are fully uh, so-called realized globally. All right, over to you, Will. Yeah, you know, I think you're you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, the only thing that is constant and consistent is change, right? And I think that we've certainly learned that uh, through throughout the past couple of years. And it seems as if the companies that were poised and set up for that consistency of change did very well, right? And the ones who were sort of stuck maybe in that traditional era and didn't really adapt to the changes or even like kind of foresee big changes coming did not do very well. Some may not even still be around, right? So 
Um, and I think, you know, you kind of have to move from this mentality of working in the business to working on the business, right? So it's kind of like getting up above and looking down. And I think that's one of the key roles of an enterprise architect is to not get lost in sort of the tornado of everything, but to kind of get up into, you know, the the top of the tree and be able to kind of map everything out and look down and, and work on it instead of always in it. Yes, sure. Now, I I know you don't have a crystal ball, uh, but let's just say hypothetically that you do. Where do you see enterprise architecture as an industry going over the next, let's just say, the next five years? I know, you know, I mean, it's, you know, AI is certainly uh, on everybody's radar, right? Artificial intelligence. Um, so where do you see this space going over the next five years? Right. Thank you, Will, for the interesting question. Right. Again, I don't I don't have uh, uh, ability to do a fortune teller, but what I predict, what I have seen today, right? I can see that EA practice will be pervasive in the entire uh, organization, right? Especially in those senior management. So uh, the, also all the C-suite or the CEO, CFO, COO, etc., they need to have some sort of a framework for them to be able to develop a strategy and realize the strategy, right? So I can see First of all, EF, EF practice will be pervasive towards uh, so-called uh, senior management and board of director uh, level. Okay, and of course, the second one is what I can foresee. Also, what uh, we call it intelligent EA, right? Of course, in the era, if you see like a phone, handphone, right? They call it smartphone. After that, now of course, it's, it's still like the phone evolved rapidly. So I can see that uh, uh, upcoming on the trend on the enterprise architecture will be like EA 4.0, right? What I call it intelligent EA. So what happened is that we leverage a lot on the what what I call it graph neural network GNN, right? You can just uh, uh, assert that, that that definition that basically can help to make a recommendation and prediction. So as we build uh, 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 the entire landscape of our organization, right? So the EA uh, uh, engine, right, should be able to uh, read from whatever the repository that we have uh, composed or we have built or industry has built, and then make a recommendation to us, right? Because that will allow us to uh, uh, so-called uh, re reduce our mundane task in terms of analysis, right? So the analysis done by the AI, right? It's the same thing like the chat GPT, right? I mean, not that, it, of course, now it's like if you are, you want to write something, you just throw in a few keywords, right? So the chat GPT gives you the first draft, right? At least with that first yeah. draft, I can save my few hours of my time, right? The same thing, uh, 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 all the enterprise architecture will have this type of uh, capability embedded into the platform, right? So that we can reduce our analysis. We can also uh, 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 let the, the enterprise architecture itself, the tool, the platform to suggest identify the gap and the target, right? Based on the strategy, based on the input or the motivation that we have put in, right? So that will, uh, 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 I think will take place, right? A matter of years, not not in the 10 of years, maybe in the one, two, three years. And I would, sure. would love to see that, right? Because that will uh, improve our productivity and of course, increase the value of architecture to the organization again. Because the what I believe is pervasive means like enterprise architecture almost in every layers in the organization. Right. And to do that, we need to have a, a, a so-called a, a, a mainstream uh, intelligent. Right. Without that, people say, oh, architects just pass it to the EA team. No, everybody should be able to uh, realize the benefit of uh, architecture. OK, this is what I think uh, uh, will take place. And of course, with that, the business can be more agile. Right. We can be uh, more responsive to what uh, the few car, the, like, the volatility, uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity. So it's, it's become the norm. Right. And yeah, so we will uh, uh, so-called uh, uh, go into the uh, follow the industry trend. And yeah, the, I believe the EA adoption will uh, take off uh, rapidly. With that uh, 4.0. Do you see or do you feel that there's any threat uh, with the introduction of AI? Uh, no, not really, because now AI also need uh, so-called a pool of the information, right? That's why now uh, for those organizations, they need to start your enterprise architecture, a uh, model, landscape, etc. practice early, right? Because without that, whatever AI coming, they cannot learn about your organization, right? Because the sure. AI need a data. So the data need to come from internal, right? So 
is now is the right time if those who have not started those who have started can continue doing that by the time ai coming it will make your entire information uh, architecture work become uh, so called uh, much more intelligent right okay. we can wait until that the, makes sense. Uh, yes yeah. That makes absolute sense. Now, uh, we have a, a few minutes left over, so I've kind of jotted some questions, if you don't mind, that I kind of sure, hit you sure, with them. <laughs> some yep. rapid fire questions. <laughs> what do you think is the biggest challenge facing uh, enterprise architects going forward? Well, I think the biggest challenge is that uh, how can we deliver a communicate value, right? We know our work has a value, but our challenge is that how we convey it to the senior management, right? Sure. At the end of the day, who will value our, of our architecture is our stakeholders, right? So I think uh, what I can uh, 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 sum up to what I have uh, experienced myself is the ability to communicate value, right? Because of course, uh, 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 the saying says that, uh, you know, we need to be able to speak business, right? We can still think technical, think technology, but we need to be able to write and speak business with that. I think we can overcome many challenges because architect uh, knows a lot of things about the insight, about information, about the organization and, yeah. you know, ability to uh, also uh, uh, align with the business, what business trying to do, right? In addition it's to almost, communication. It's almost like they need to become storytellers, right? So, all right. perfect. you know, you, you have all the data and you've mapped everything out, but, you know, to be able to pull that out and tell the story of all that data, you know, seems to be where the architect could take it to the next level to where they could yes. provide value through storytelling. Yes. In fact, in fact, the ISA already did a research. 80% of the effective enterprise architect involved in the communication, right? Human dynamic, yep. what they call it. 80% is human dynamic. So this, I think, uh, uh, despite all the AI coming, all the trend on the architecture, but we need to beef up our ability to communicate, right? And of course, sharpen our human dynamic uh, skill set. Yeah, no, absolutely. All right, last one. So I was kind of sitting here thinking as we've talked about the traditional EA, and I can't help but think that we've even kind of chatted a little bit, you know, earlier in the podcast of, of does it surprise you that people are still kind of stuck in that Visio Excel PowerPoint mode? But let's say somebody is listening to this sitting out there and they are stuck in that mode. What is your best advice for that person stuck in the traditional era of EA? How can they convince or move out of that era into, uh, you know, kind of the, you know, the tools that are available today and the practices that are available today? Well, I guess you need to experience it yourself, right? Because, because you know, some of the other teams said, I'm comfortable with Excel, right? I know everything I do from scratch, right? From uh, one uh, uh, Excel sheet to now we've got 100,000 of them, right? I know all the linkages. But again, we need to talk about uh, rapid uh, 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 changes. How fast your Excel sheet can handle the FUCA, right? The volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. How fast, right? Of course, you can handle it, but let me tell you, it will take some time, right? And typically, you need, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, a dedicated team to manage that. Well, but actually, you you can just get the technology, the platform like Beach Design, right, to handle all that complexity, and you start focusing on the higher value added activities, communicate with sure. the, uh, communicating with the value to the stakeholders, uh, present them the impact analysis, and etc. Et right. So the platform like the Beach Design already designed, right, to help you to deliver or equip you with the so-called the tools for you to perform the EA tasks rather than you need to build it from scratch, right? Of course, now my argument is that you can build a data warehouse using Excel spreadsheet. Can you do that? Yes, you can, but nobody is doing that anymore, right? Yeah. I can, instead of I'm doing a barcode scanner, I need to enter product code one by one. Good luck. Of course, if you only have 10 items, yes, you can, but you've got million of the goods in the in the storeroom, no way you can handle There's it. There's no Same way, with the yeah. Architects. <laughs> Yes, because no, that, I have, that, uh, just uh, to wrap up, I have uh, one uh, experience myself, right? This is back, actually, was uh, like 10 years ago, right? Uh, one of our clients told me that, Aaron, uh, I don't think I'm interested with the EA2. I just want to do EA. You can use whatever tool you want, right? So at the time, sure. I was, you know, I thought, that, yeah, why not, right? So the agreement is valid. Then we started doing that, doing that. And my second week, my team came back to me, Aaron, can you give us the tool, right? We can't do with, with Excel. So there was a a, a high price uh, school fee that I need to pay, right? And from then on, we're not going to involve in the architecture using Excel. 
can be yeah. done, but uh, I need to have uh, maybe four times the size of my team, right? And it costs very costly and also uh, cannot get the some, almost like up-to-date information. So everything is got lagging, right? And I don't think people can accept this type sure. of uh, architecture in the today uh, digital world. Well, that's like if you were going to set out to build a house, right? And yes, you can do hammer and nails, yes, right? And you, you can, can build the house with a hammer and nails, or you can go buy a nail gun that's powered yes. by air and it will be much faster. <laughs> you yes, can still definitely. build it with a hammer and nail, but there's available tools like a nail gun that will yes. speed up your process, right? And be yes. able to manage that building <laughs> more efficiently. Yes, you're right, Bill. Well, Aaron, this has been wonderful. I really appreciate you coming on uh, today on the show to talk about this. I mean, and, and this this flyover of the last, you know, 15 years of enterprise architecture has been incredibly eye opening for me. I hope also to our listeners. Um, so, Aaron, thank you again for coming on. Thank you all for listening, as always. Um, if you do have recommendations for a future guest, I'd love to hear them. Please uh, just email podcast at bizdesign.com. If you've got comments, questions, or a, a guest that you'd like to recommend, would love to hear from you. Aaron, thank you again. I myself am going to go to bed because it is late in the evening for me, but you have the rest of your day ahead of yes. you. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you so much, Leo, and thank you, everyone, for listening.